All right, President Biden says the U.S. will respond to the deadly attack at a U.S. base in Jordan. He made the comment on Sunday in South Carolina, just hours after a drone struck the base known as Tower 22 near the Syrian border. Three service members were killed and over 30 others injured. The White House is blaming Iran-backed militias for the attack. Joining us now, National Security Council Coordinator for Strate Strategic Communications at the White House, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby is with us. Admiral, I think a lot of Americans want to know if the Iranians continue to sponsor attacks uh, that kill Americans, that wound Americans, uh, that, that, that cause serious problems for, for, for Americans and undermine American interests in the region. At what point do we actually go after the source of the attacks, Iran, and strike them where they are? Well, I think I, I certainly understand uh, Americans' concern over uh, over these repeated attacks by uh, groups that are backed by Iran, Joe. Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of the president or his decision space. I mean, you heard him say yesterday, we're going to respond. We'll do that. Obviously, we have now three families, three American families that got the worst possible news over the weekend, and now 30 more uh, uh, others that are injured, some of them seriously. Uh, we're going to take this seriously as well. We've got to do what we have to do to protect our troops and our facilities. What the options are available to the president, we're still working uh, through that. He's still working his way through that. And I don't want to close down any decision space on, on his behalf. That said, uh, we certainly know Iran's back in these groups. Uh, we, we know that they are resourcing, they're supplying. In some cases, they're providing information that allows these groups uh, to do this. We're taking that very seriously. We don't want a wider war with, uh, with Iran. We don't want a wider war in the, in the region. Uh, but we got to do what we have to do. So you don't want a wider war. At the same time, it, it, it can also be true that a retaliation is required at this point. I mean, and, and, and is there any sense of how quickly the United States will respond? Well, Mika, no question there's going to be a response. And you heard that from the president yesterday. We, we will respond. Uh, but as we've done in the past, we're going to do it in a time and a manner of our choosing. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be careful. We'll be deliberate about this. Uh, and, uh, and, we'll, and the president will make the right decisions at the right time. Uh, we're certainly not going to telegraph punches to the Iranians or to these groups that they're backing. So, Admiral, uh, if you would, please tell us a little more about what happened yesterday, this, this attack. Uh, you, who, which specific Iranian-backed group do we think was, do you believe was responsible? And how yeah. did this drone reach this facility where it could endanger these American lives, killing three, but also, we should note, uh, wounding some seriously up to two or three dozen more? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, this was definitely a lethal attack, no question about that. We think it was a single drone. Uh, we're still working out the details of like how this drone got through uh, and how it was able to actually target uh, what, in, in essence, uh, was a, a barracks building. Uh, and given the hour upon which uh, this attack occurred, uh, you know, these these uh, these troops were mostly uh, in their beds and asleep. They were in their in, in a barracks. Um, so we're still working out the details of exactly how this happened and um, and, and how it occurred. Uh, as for attribution, um, again, we're still working our way through the intelligence on this as well. Clearly, uh, it has all the earmarks uh, of a group or groups that are supported by Qatab Hezbollah, which is one of the big uh, IRGC-funded, supported, and resource groups uh, that operates in Iraq and Syria. Uh, again, has all the earmarks of that, but we're still working our way through what the attribution uh, is actually going to look like. Admiral, um, two questions. Can you give us an update on the talks in Europe around the hostage release and a potential ceasefire and whether it looks like there is a deal that is going to be done? Um, and secondly, uh, on Friday, Prime Minister Netanyahu gave an interview with The Wall Street Journal in which he said Amer uh, Israel had to retain security control of West Bank and Gaza. How helpful or unhelpful are those comments in trying to plan for a sort of long-term solution that looks more like what the Biden administration wants, which is a two-state solution? So on the first question, uh, Caddy, uh, the talks have been, I think, I, I think it's fair to describe them as constructive. I, I've said sober and serious, but I think I could go so far as constructive. Now, I don't want to sound too sanguine here. Uh, I don't, we don't have a, a deal that's on the table and imminently ready to be announced. Uh, there's a lot of good discussions going on. Brett McGurk, our coordinator for the uh, Middle East, just came back from uh, Doha just a few days ago, also participating in these discussions with the Qataris, with the Egyptians, with the Israelis. Uh, and we think there's a framework here 
here uh, for another hostage deal uh, that could really make a difference in terms of getting more hostages out, getting more aid in, and actually getting the violence to come down. And that would reduce, of course, civilian casualties. So uh, a lot of promise here. But again, I, I want to be very, very clear. There's, there's still diplomacy ahead of us, still a lot of uh, discussions to occur before we can get there. Now, as to the, uh, the comments about uh, that, that you cite from Prime Minister Netanyahu, I think we've been very clear. I can't speak for him. He can speak for his comments. What I can speak for is, is President Biden. Uh, we still believe in the promise of a two-state solution, and that's going to require leadership. Leadership on the Israeli side, leadership on the Palestinian side to come together and work through some of these differences. But the president still believes in that. He also believes that whatever post-conflict Gaza looks like, it can't be reduced in size or territory. It's got to be the same Gaza Strip that we see right now. Uh, we don't support a reoccupation. We don't support a re reduction in, in territory. And what we do want is the voice and, and the vote uh, and the aspirations of the Palestinian people to hold sway here, which is why we're working with Mahmoud Abbas to see if we can get some sort of revitalized Palestinian authority in work so that the, so that they can actually administer post-conflict Gaza. It, it, it shouldn't be, can't be reoccupied. And uh, finally, just before you go, I want to ask you about this uh, revelation that's still ongoing, more information about U.N. workers having ties to the yeah. October 7th attacks. What do we know about this and, and yeah. how does that hamper the U.N.'s efforts there and around the world? Very, very troubling allegations here against about a dozen employees of the U.N. Uh, Relief and Works Agency, otherwise known as UNRWA. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot of great work in the region, certainly in Gaza. Uh, they have helped literally save thousands of lives since this conflict began. Uh, but these are serious allegations about a dozen of their employees who were somehow involved in various ways uh, in the October 7th attacks. I would tell you, I think people need to remember that UNRWA actually brought the allegations forward to us. They told us about it. They're taking it seriously. They've called for an investigation. And the Secretary General of the U.N., Guterres, said that he'll hold anybody responsible accountable. And, and even through uh, potentially criminal prosecutions, that's a good sign that they're taking this very, very seriously. They don't want this stain on their organization. We don't want this stain on the organization. Now, in light of the investigation and the allegations, we've paused our funding. We're going to sit tight here on any additional funding for UNRWA till they work their way through this. Uh, and then we'll make the appropriate decisions based on not only the investigation results, uh, but also what they do about those results.